So in the last few videos, we've talked about inventory a lot, but there's one thing that we haven't accounted for, and those are uncollectible sales or sales that might not be collected. So I'm just going to bring up a journal entry and go through an example to kind of let you in on what I'm talking about. So in this instance, uh, this is just a normal sale under a perpetual inventory system. So of course, this represents the sale. So accounts receivable is being debited because we're receiving a receivable, I guess you could say. We're receiving an asset, which is accounts receivable. So we have a claim to cash in the near future. And our revenue is being credited or it's going up because we've made a sale. And this other entry is our cost of goods sold or our expense for that inventory. And this is going to be our expense entry, which shows that inventory is being credited or it's leaving our books to show that we've sold inventory. So together, we'll have a sale or a revenue, a sale revenue, and an expense entry. And of course, you'll want more revenue than expense because that's what all companies want. And this will, of course, generate income. So where is the problem here? Well, I'm going to bring up an example. So example, example one, let's say we're a company and we have a really easy credit policy. So we say 0% interest and our, our credit terms, that's actually really poor writing. So I'm just going to erase this and rewrite it. Credit terms are easy. Okay. So basically we have an easy credit policy. Well, what's going to happen is it's going to drive demand up for our computers. So like I said, we were, we're selling computers. These are just brackets, not a CC, it's just computers and brackets. Uh, so basically what's this, what's it, what's it going to do for our net income? Net income is going to be on the y-axis and time is just going to be on the x-axis and this is going to be year one. So we're hoping in, in year one what this is going to do is it's going to cause net income to absolutely go through the roof. So our, our net income is going to rise exponentially because of course um, selling more computers will generate more income. But what's going to happen is with all these all of these easy credit terms and low interest rates we might we might uh, we might take on customers that may not be able to pay their bills in the future so these are going to possibly lead to uncollectibles or receivables that we cannot collect so basically they're bad debts and what happens when we can't collect an account well our accounts receivables are going to go down because Basically, we're not going to be able to claim that cash anymore. We're not going, it's, it's not going to be collectible. And our expenses are going to go up because this is going to be a bad debt expense since it's become a bad debt and we cannot collect it. So our expense will go up. And what's going to happen is with more expense, you can kind of guess what's going to happen to net income. What does expense do to net income? It actually causes it to drop. So in the second year, it may create a dramatic drop in earnings. So in the first year, it might show a dramatic increase in earnings. And in year two, it might show a dramatic decrease in earnings. So this is a really, it becomes really inconsistent. Inconsistent. And it kind of misleads people. Uh, misleads investors and other users of financial information. So to kind of to kind of uh, move away from this inconsistent way of doing things, we actually create this thing called the the allowance method, which we're going to learn about in the next tutorial. And it's basically going to create an allowance to show that we have a certain amount of estimated bad debts. And when we estimate a certain amount of bad debts, uh, we're basically going to be incurring an expense in uh, year one and an expense 
in year two, rather than just one huge expense in year two. And that way, our, our earnings will be more consistent or it will essentially smooth the earnings. So if I were to redraw these uh, redraw these these graphs, it would look something more like this. Instead of a dramatic increase and a dramatic decrease, it might be more of a consistent amount of net income being generated in year one and year two. And that actually will reflect the situation rather than confuse investors and other users of information. So we'll be talking about the allowance method in the next tutorial. I'll see you guys then. If you have any questions regarding accounting or any of the material within our videos, you can tweet us at NotePirate. You can like us on Facebook to receive updates or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped. And like always, thanks for watching us on YouTube.